They had at least a vague notion of the general plan of relays and circuits that had long since grown past the point where any single human could possibly have a firm grasp of the whole. Multivac was self-adjusting and self-correcting. It had to be, for nothing human could adjust and correct it quickly enough or even adequately enough. So Adel and Lupoff attended the monstrous giant only lightly and superficially, yet as well as any men could. They fed it data, adjusted questions to its needs, and translated the answers that were issued. Certainly they, and all others like them, were fully entitled to share in the glory that was Multivax. For decades, Multivac had helped design the ships and plot the trajectories that had enabled man to reach the moon, Mars, and Venus. But past that, Earth's poor resources could not support the ships. Too much energy was needed for the long trips. Earth exploited its coal and uranium with increasing efficiency, but there was only so much of both. But slowly, Multivac learned enough to answer deeper questions more fundamentally. And on May 14th, 2061, what had been theory became fact. The energy of the sun was stored, converted, and utilized directly on a planet-wide scale. All Earth turned off its burning coal, its fissioning uranium, and flipped the switch that connected all of it to a small station, one mile in diameter, circling the Earth, and half the distance of the moon. All Earth ran by invisible beams of sun power. Seven days had not sufficed to dim the glory of it, and Adel and Lupoff finally managed to escape from the public functions and to meet in quiet where no one could think of looking for them, in the deserted underground chambers where portions of the mighty buried body of Multivac showed, unattended, idly, sorting data with contented lazy clickings. Multivac, too, had earned its vacation and the boys appreciated that. They had no intention, originally, of disturbing it. They had brought a bottle with them, and their only concern at the moment was to relax in the company of each other and the bottle. It's amazing when you think of it, said Adel. His broad face had lines of weariness in it, and he stirred his drink slowly with a glass rod, watching the cubes of ice slur clumsily about. All the energy we could possibly ever use for free, enough energy if we wanted to draw on it to melt all Earth into a big drop of impure liquid iron. 